is a power within you that can lift your life to its highest level. It can change illness into health. It can bring peace amidst turmoil. It can bring success out of failure and victory out of defeat. It can bring companionship and happiness out of loneliness. It responds to you. For this is the power that dwells within you, and so it is. Amen. Thank you for joining me this morning for The Way to a Wonderful Life. I am Reverend Dr. Henry Lee Bates, coming to you live from Palm Springs, California, teaching the evolutionary science of mind, the philosophy of the mastermind Jesus. This program is not pre-recorded, nor is it edited. It is live. For more information about this ministry, please visit www.revbates.tv or www.revbatesontheradio.org, or you can find me on youtube.com by just searching for Reverend Henry Bates, that's B-A-T-E-S, or you can go to MSN, Google, Yahoo, or Bing, and find me under Reverend Henry Bates, and you can find everything you want to find out about this ministry. You can write to me at P.O. Box 1173, that's P.O. Box 1173, Palm Springs, California, 92263. Once again, that's P.O. Box 1173, Palm Springs, California, 92263. And you can call me in the Los Angeles area at 818-476-0088 or in Palm Springs at 760-778. Five six seven seven. Once again, this is the way to a wonderful life, and I am Reverend Dr. Henry Lee Bates coming to you live from Palm Springs, California, and we're teaching the evolutionary science of mind, the philosophy of the mastermind Jesus, and this morning, let's all be willing to go beyond religion, go beyond religion to the to the metaphysical teachings of the mastermind Jesus and the mystical teachings of the of the great. Ernest Holmes and Eric Butterworth and Joseph Murphy, and let's just know that within ourselves that there's a power within us, and that power is the Christ that's within us. I can do all things through Christ which strengthens me. We learn that from the Scriptures, but we want to see it. We want to see that I can do all things as it plays out in our day-to-day lives, in our practical, practical living experience. So each and every one of us, let's listen up and let's know and let's declare within ourselves that I can do all things through Christ, which is this indwelling Spirit of God within me. I can do all things through Christ, this indwelling Spirit of God within me. Right now, right where I am. And so it is. Amen. So let's move on to our Way to a Wonderful Life message for today, which is the second installment of our Jesus series. There's going to be three. Last week was number one. This is number two. Next Sunday and next Wednesday, we'll go into the Jesus series three. This week, it's Jesus. See it in your mind first. See it in your mind first. And I say unto you, ask, and we know that's claim. Claim, claim it, and it shall be given to you. Seek, and you shall find. Knock, and it shall be opened unto you. For everyone that asks receives, and he that seeks finds, and to him that knocks it shall be opened. This is from the book of Luke. Chapter 11, 9 through 10 from the Holy Bible, the King James Version of the Bible, which is the, the, most, the most accurate of all Bibles, the King James Version of the Bible. And we want to know and we want to understand that this power, this power of the infinite that moves, moves through us, that not only do we live in it, it lives in us. And we can go back to the, the Bhagavad Gita, which was written 1500 B.C., before, before Christ, that we can read, the power of God is with you at all times. Through the activities of mind, senses, breathing, and emotions, and is constantly doing all the work, using you as a mere instrument, using you as a mere instrument. So we want to say, use me, O oh God, 
to create a greater joy in my life. Use me, O oh God, to create, create a greater peace in my life. Use me, O oh God, to create a greater prosperity in my, in my life. Use me, O oh God, to cre- create a, a greater, a greater realization of the beauty within me and the beauty in the world in which I live. Use me, God, to re- reveal these things to me. Reveal these things to me, for we know that this power of God is with you at all times, which is with you at all times, through the activities of our mind, our senses, our breathing, and our emotions, and is constantly doing all the work, using us as a mere instrument, seeks to express something through us in a greater way, in a greater way. As the radical Jesus said, it is the Father that doeth the work. It is the Father that doeth the work. The Father works, and then I work. We must realize that this is the absolute, immutable, changeless truth as we read this from the Bhagavad Gita, which was written 1,500 years before Christ. We know that this, this is the truth, that absolute truth. And we go to Eric Butterworth from his book, Life is for Living. Life is for Living. He writes, Jesus said, I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. However, Jesus did not create this abundant life, nor did he bestow it upon individuals. He was talking about a discovery that he made about man, about you and me, a discovery that forms the central idea of his gospel or good news. The great idea is simply this, because man is spiritual being, he is forever the focus of spiritual power that works to manifest life in perfect health and harmony and abundance. And that he includes women as well, that's all of us. Jesus identified this power as the Father within. We know that's the truth. Jesus identified this power as the Father within. He said, it is your Father's good pleasure. Notice he said your Father. He didn't say my Father. It is your Father, our Father. Your Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Your Father knoweth what things you have need of before you ask him. All things whatsoever the Father hath are mine. That means if I claim my share of that infinite abundance, I can, I can realize it in my experience. I can have it. I can do it. Or I can be it. Yet he clearly indicates that Father, that Father is but his fond personalization of the action of divine law, his fine personalization of the action of divine law. Father, infinite presence, infinite power, infinite intelligence. That's what Jesus was, was trying to tell us. We must take that realization, that realization from the Bhagavad Gita, which Jesus evolved to his ministry and his life and gave it to us in a more dynamic way, we must take that today. Here we are in 2011, approaching 2012. We must take this into our mind and dwell on it and contemplate it and bring God into our mind in a greater way because as we bring God into our mind in a greater way, we will feel that power of God within us at all times through the activities of our mind, our senses, our breathing, and our emotions, and it will constantly, constantly be doing all the work necessary for us, through us, using us as a mere instrument of this expression of a greater life. There is so much to be gained in examining the philosophy and the teaching of Jesus, providing we don't filter, filter that which we read or study through the perspective of religions, especially Christianity and Catholicism. Religion has moved the masses away from understanding universal spiritual truth, which is the foundation of the radical Jesus' philosophy. Jesus' profound statements are providing us a way in which to develop our consciousness from the ancient tribal laws and the religious dogma to a greater awareness of our relationship with God, mind, intelligence, spirit, and truth. This is why he pointed to nature and the universal laws that are at work in it. For us to realize a greater awareness of this thing called life, that is, the life of God, as it is expressed through all of life, eternally, both here and in the hereafter. 
both here and in the hereafter. The radical Jesus taught that we are to be in the world, but not of the world. To be in the world, but not of the world. But this teaching is not for us to fear the world or to have disdain for the world, or, or to think that, oh, well, well, everything's going to be better when I get on the other side, when I'm in heaven. No, your heaven is right here on earth. My heaven is right here. Heaven is right here where we are, because God is right here where we are. We are in the presence of the presence of God. As the scripture reads, in him, and that him is spirit, life, and truth. In him we live and move and have our being, and we go to the next step as Jesus did, and as we just learn from the Bhagavad Gita, that in us it seeks, that is God, seeks to express itself in a greater way. Express itself in a greater way, a greater health, a greater harmony, a greater joy, a greater abundance, a greater beauty, a greater whatever it is that enters into our mind as we enter into our mind with the thought of God, infinite presence moving into our life experience. So this be in the world but not of the world is not for us to fear the world, but to see the world as developing consciousness. There is no power in the world but the presence of God. And to know this frees us to experience heaven right here on earth. And as we find in the statement from the Bhagavad Gita, as I said, it was written 1,500 years before Jesus, the power of God is with us at all times. The power of God is with us at all times. That we must seek it to find it in our experiences, that we must seek it to find it in our experiences. So as we realize that the power of God is with us at all times, just imagine how free that makes us feel. Just imagine that as we take this idea, this eternal truth that was being taught by Krishna and Jesus, and we realize in our mind that the power of God is with us at all times, how that changes the things in our life. Instead of saying, I am sick, we can say, I am getting better and better every day and every way. Instead of saying, I am broke, I can say, I have available to me all that I need when I need it. That includes money and everything good. Instead of saying that I'm lonely and unhappy, I can say, I can draw unto me through the power of God that lives and moves and has its being in me, around me, for me, all things necessary for me to enjoy loving companionship and friendship and all those wonderful things that, that I feel and desire within my soul to experience. Each and every one of us can do this. Instead of saying, I am a failure, I can say there is no failure in God and there's no failure in me because I know that the power of God is with me at all times and there is no failure in God, so there's no failure in me. There's only another direction in which I must go another method in which I must realize my success and my prosperity, realize all the good that I am to do, all the good that I am to be, and all the good that I am to have. Now, most of us have been taught that as we seek our good, when we find it, we find God. Most of us have never been taught this, that as we seek our good, when we find it, we find God. Why? Because God is our all in all. God is everything. And so when we find God, we find a heightened awareness of the love and the law of God. We find a heightened awareness of the law, the law of God, because that Father that Jesus was talking about was just his fine personalization of the action of divine law. And the action of divine law is a combination of love and law. That means whatever comes to us, whatever desire comes to us, that we can love it and we feel passionate about being it, having it, or doing it, and it takes nothing away from anyone else because it is, it is coming to us from love and it must go from us as love, then we realize that this universal law, this, this sowing and reaping, this law that, that realizes with but for us, all things necessary for it to take place in our experience, it starts being activated Im immediately. It's the action of divine law, love and law, love and law. We must keep that in our mind. For many of us, we identify this as the grace of God, 
the grace of God. How many times have we said, if not for the grace of God, there go I? So we know it's the grace of God, this action, this divine law, this action of love and law through us, as us, and for us, and throughout the universe, it's the grace of God. The mastermind Jesus understood that what we are seeking is seeking us. What we are seeking is seeking us, because that desire that comes into our mind that's coming for us to, to look at it, to examine it, to think about it. Do we want this? Does this appeal to us? Is this something that will create something more wonderful in my life? Will it create a more marvelous experience that I can live and share with all those around me? It's up to us to choose. Because we get all these wonderful desires all the time in our heart and our mind and our soul that come to us to have, to be, to do all sorts of things. But we have to choose that which is ours. Just like Jesus said, all that the Father half is mine, but we know we can't, we can't take it all. We can't handle it all. We don't want to be responsible for it all. We just want to be responsible, responsible and take and claim that which is ours. We know that. The mastermind Jesus understood that what we are seeking is seeking us, and so he could state that as we seek, we shall find with absolute confidence, knowing that it is the action of divine law. We don't have to fight for our good or to resist what the world calls evil. We only must seek it within our mind, seek it within our mind, and let our emotions reveal to us the joy in having it, being it, or doing it. Whatever our own personal idea, personal idea of that good may be. The modern mystic Eric Butterworth sums up the, the ministry of Jesus as a discovery, the discovery or the central idea of his gospel or good news is that man, and this means the human species, is spiritual being and is forever the focus of spiritual power that works to manifest life in perfect health, perfect harmony, and perfect abundance. And as we know that the spirit is mind, and the spirit within us is found in our mind, our thoughts and our emotions, which is why we must seek or focus inwardly, inwardly in our mind on what we want in order to receive it. We must focus inwardly in our mind. That means we must go into the silence. We must get, get away from the world. We must go into the closet, as the radical Jesus said, and shut out the world and focus inwardly in our mind on what it is that we want to receive, what it is that we want to do, what it is that we want to have. If we're looking for having a problem, we want that solution. If we have a need, we want that need fulfilled. If we are having a desire, we want to realize that desire in our life and realize the good that's, that's part of it. We realize the good that's part of it. We can't go running around looking, looking for all sorts of things and find anything but hard work and sweat and tears if we don't go inwardly and seek whatever it is that we want to realize or experience in our life with God. We must communicate. We must open our mind to God. We must see the thing within us. We must see the image of it. We must see ourselves in it in order for us to have it, to do it, or to be it. You know, a few weeks ago, I was up in the mountains outside Palm Springs in Morongo Valley, and I observed a young coyote as he came up on a covey of quail. There must have been 30 to 40 birds in the covey. The young coyote ran after one and then another and then another and so on. He was so excited in seeing so many quail that he lost his focus and didn't catch even one. This is what happens with so many of us. We lose our focus on what we really want, and we end up with results that we don't want. And for many of us, we don't even know what we really want, and so we allow those around us to influence our choices and we end up with results that never fully satisfy us. We do. We do that. So many people spend more time watching television than they do communicating with God. So many people spend more time watching a football game or a baseball game than they do communicating with God. And there's absolutely nothing wrong with watching television or watching a football game or watching a baseball game or even going to a boxing match. But we have to spend at least that much time, that much time inwardly, 
communicating, surrendering to the good desires that God wants us to experience. Otherwise, we will never know what they are. We will never know what they are. We must spend the time until we know. We must spend the time until we can believe and have faith that whatever it is that comes to us to be, to do, or to have is absolutely ours to believe, to do, or to have. Let's go back to that statement from the Bhagavad Gita because this is absolutely powerful. This is Krishna. The power of God is with you at all times. Through the activities of mind, senses, breathing, and emotions, and is constantly doing all the work, using you as a mere instrument. Using you, that's me and you, as a mere instrument. And then we go to Jesus from the book of Luke, <clears throat> chapter 11, 9 through 10, that's from the King James Version of the Bible. And I say unto you, ask, that means claim, claim and it shall be given you. Seek, and you shall find, but we must seek it in our mind first. See it in your mind first, Jesus is telling us. Knock, and it shall be opened unto you. That's our lesson from next week. And for everyone that claims, receives, and he that seeks, finds, and to him that knocks, it shall be opened. These are absolute truths. These are immutable, changeless truths. That's why we find them in both the Bhagavad Gita and we find them in the Gospels the gospel, the good news that Jesus discovered for each and every one of us. Once again, we won't know with certainty what we really want until we take the time to seek it in our mind and discover that which is seeking us. Discover that which is seeking us. And when we do, we shall see it in our mind first the images of it, and the joy of knowing that what we seek is seeking us. For all that we seek, as the radical Jesus said, we shall find. For it is God always, for it is God always seeking to express itself through us, as us, and for us. And as it states in the Bhagavad Gita, using us only, only as an instrument of this expression, using us only as an instrument in which to express life right here, right where we are, more abundantly. Not later, not someday in a heaven far beyond, but right here, right where we are. Be in the world, but not of the world. But don't fear the world. Don't have disdain for the world. Realize that what you see, God has created. And if God has created this world, this world as a heaven for all of us to experience, then we can realize that as we go into the hereafter, we will find another world just as heavenly if we don't mess it up with our, with our prejudices and our racism and our anti-Semitism and our homophobia and all of our nationalism and all that other stuff that separates us from each other. God has brought us into this world to experience life and to experience it abundantly, to experience the diversity in the human species, to experience the diversity in the animal species, to experience the diversity in the mineral species, to experience the diversity in this wonderful creation that we call Earth. Each and every one of us have the opportunity every day to claim a greater part of this infinite abundance that God has created for us and realize, as did the radical Jesus, all that the Father hath for me, I claim it today. I claim it today because God has it for me. I claim my share of that infinite abundance. I claim my share of that allness of God. I claim my joy and my happiness and my peace. I claim my health and my harmony, my beauty and my abundance right here, right now, right where I am, and so it is. Amen. Once again, I want to thank you for being with me today. This is The Way to a Wonderful Life. I am Reverend Dr. Henry Lee Bates, and I'm coming to you live from Palm Springs, California. This program is never pre-recorded, nor is it edited. It is always live. It has been my great pleasure to have you with me, and I hope you join me for my next broadcast right here on KTYM AM 1460 Radio and at www. 
KTYM.com worldwide this coming Wednesday evening at 7 p.m. Eastern Time, and or Eastern Time, <laughs> Pacific Time, I'm sorry, Pacific Time, 7 p.m. Pacific Time Wednesday evening, and be sure and visit www.revbates.tv or revbates on the radio.org for more information or to submit prayer requests, questions, or comments about this program. Translations of my weekly messages are available in both Spanish and Italian as well as English on revbates.tv, and you can find YouTube videos radio of these audio videos of these radio presentations on youtube.com in both Spanish and English. Once again, this program is an independent project of Rev Bates Ministries and is supported by your very generous donations. So I invite you to make a, a tithe, a faith offering, a love offering, a donation, or a contribution to this ministry by going to Rev Bates on the radio.org or Rev TV and using your ATM or your credit card to make that donation to the secure PayPal system. Or you can mail that donation to Reverend Henry Bates, that's B A T E S, at P.O. Box. 1173 P.O. Box 1173 Palm Springs, California 92263. And once again, you can call me in the Los Angeles area at 818 476 0088 or in Palm Springs at 760 778 5677. And beginning tomorrow, Monday, December 5th, we will be on The Way to Wonderful Life will be on WKDI AM 840 Radio in Maryland, Delaware, and South Jersey. So if you know someone in Maryland, Delaware, or South Jersey, email them, call them, send them a note, and say The Way to Wonderful Life will be on every day, Monday through Friday, at 9.30 a.m. That's Eastern Time. Eastern Time. It'll be 6.30 here in Palm Springs, where we'll be doing this program live. But it'll be at 9.30 a.m. Eastern Time in Maryland, Delaware. Delaware and South Jersey on WKDI AM 840 Radio. That'll be the way to a wonderful life. <clears throat> Rev Bates on the radio coming to them live from Palm Springs, California. Once again, I want to thank you for being with me today. We're going to go over these words from Dr. Eric Butterworth. He's a truly a mystic of our times from his book, Life is for the Living. We're going to take these words into our mind. We're going to take these words from the Bhagavad Gita, and we're going to understand these because these are the teachings of the radical Jesus. This is the philosophy of Jesus that each and every one of us must understand and know and realize in our experience every day. And I say unto you, ask and it shall be given you, seek and you shall find, knock and it shall be opened unto you. For every one that asks receives, and he that seeks finds, and to him that knocks it shall be opened. That's Jesus in the book of Luke, chapter 11, 9 through 12, in the King James Version of the Bible. Then we go to the mystical Eric Butterworth. Jesus said, I came that they may have life and have it more abundantly. However, Jesus did not create this abundant life, nor did he bestow it upon individuals. He was talking about a discovery that he had made about us, a discovery that forms a central idea of his gospel or good news. The great idea is simply this, because we are spiritual beings, he is forever the, we are forever the focus of spiritual power that works to manifest life in perfect health and harmony and abundance. Jesus identified this power as the Father within. He said it is the Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Your Father. Notice, he didn't say my Father. He said your Father, our Father. Your Father knoweth what things you have need of before you ask him. All things whatsoever the Father hath are mine, but we must claim that part of that allness that is ours so that we can experience it in our, in our life today, right now, right away. Yet he clearly indicates that Father is but the, his fine personalization of the action of divine law. And we go to the Bhagavad Gita written 1,500 years before Christ. The power of God is with you at all times through the activities of mind, senses, breathing, and emotions, and is constantly doing all the work using you as a mere instrument. So let's go beyond all the old tribal ideas, all the old tribal 
our attitudes and concepts, and let's realize, as the radical Jesus did, that all that the Father hath is mine. Let not your heart be troubled. Let not your heart be troubled. Fear not, little flock, for it's the Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Be in the world, but not of the world. But love this world, because God has created this world for you. But don't let the world tell you that it's not filled with the presence of God. Don't let this world tell you that it's not filled with the Spirit of God. Don't let this world tell you that you're not of God, for we are all of